questions or suggestions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Public comment. Michael Kirby, do you wish to address us? You don't have anything tonight? You sure? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, updates from committee members. Uh, does anyone have anything you want to share with me? Okay, I have um, I have some information that Robbie may not be here tonight. Uh, asked me to uh, uh, to offer to the committee. She has communicated with uh, Wesley Slate, who is the city clerk in Beverly, and who is also the uh, secretary of Massachusetts. Association. You recall that we talked about inviting him to our meeting on August 20th. Uh, he has said that he could be here in person and is happy to, to address the committee and answer questions. Uh, Robbie uh, asked me to uh, read her comments, and Danny, I, I uh, emailed it to you yesterday. So that is, uh, Robbie. After the presentations of the committee June 18th, unanimous straw vote, as well as the framework tips recently shared by Mayor Narkowitz, that was the document that was emailed to us on June 27th, I questioned whether it would be necessary or beneficial for West to make the trip. If we expect a crowd that wants to hear more, I can see its value, but also we have the testimony of present and former city clerks that we can speak to, which seems more valuable in my mind. Robbie's uh, message to the So, um, uh, uh, I, it's a pleasure to commit. Do you want to have a question out here on the next 20 minutes? Right, he, so he favors that structure. Yeah. 
Yeah, as I, as I recall, it were all the clerks favored the structure that they were currently existing. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, the only thing I pointed out, Bill, is um, uh, if we have someone, uh, and he also, you know, he represents he represents the city clerks association. Uh, if we have someone from outside come in, we can publicize that. We can let the community know that we're considering. We've already taken a straw vote to change the position to be appointed. Uh, perhaps draw uh, some other comments. I'm not sure that's going to happen on August 20th, uh, anyway. But. Um, yeah, I, I, I have no objection to anyone offering different new perspectives and uh, from the government personally, but it's, uh, uh, What about Skyping him? Didn't we offer that? We did. Oh, he preferred yeah. to come to North Carolina. He wants to be Western. He really wants to come over. <laughs> it was unanimous, so I, I feel like it's spending a lot of extra time and meeting two thirds into our time on something that we might have already discussed ad nauseum. We have had many viewpoints, uh, and I think, you know, I, I don't know, I think we made up our minds already that we don't need somebody from the outside to come and give us a different perspective. I'd rather have a local. A uh, professional from the municipal organization would have presumably a broader perspective that is uh, uh, talking to a number of people with a number of experiences, despite their already his, his preference, his city preference. You know, as we, the fact that we made up our minds, the fact that, but that was based on all testimony that sort of reinforced it anyway. I think it would be, I think it's important to hear what other agencies and other people think, and given the fact this guy's had a bent on coming here, I want to show him a good time. <laughs> That's your job, then. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, like one of the things, since this is happening during the summer, and this is kind of one of the bigger things, we want to make sure that we're giving fair notice to the public. So meaning that having this like event, or bringing in a guest, would ideally give more notice. So, like have you, have you talked to anyone at the Gazette about writing on our recommendation? You know, I haven't because I wanted to wait until yeah, the night okay. to see if we're actually going to okay. write. Um, yeah, I'm not against it, but also like August 20th is also vacation time too. You know. Fine. Can we take a vote? <laughs> Who feels really strongly that we should have this person? I don't feel strongly either way. What? It's not a great way to frame the phone. <laughs> I, I can make a motion. Kind of assumes. I can make a motion. <laughs> What's his role again? He's the president of the. No, no. He's the. Uh, <laughs> Society Association? Secretary, Secretary of the Massachusetts oh, Secretary. And are we, in effect, disinviting him? No. We say, well, we uh, wouldn't ask him to come. It might, it might just be faster to have him come at this point. Well, what is his. What would he be? Would he be speaking just as his role as city clerk, or would he be representing the organization? Well, I think that he would speak. He could speak in both capacities. Um, he could speak more broadly, and because he's had experience with the city clerks association. Stan, you seem inclined to have them. I, I am inclined. To have them. Yeah. Uh, I don't see any harm in it, and I think it's one way of generating some interest uh, in the issue. We, we, I think we agreed last time that this has been so contentious in the past that we want to make sure that the community knows that we're prepared to recommend a change, and we want to hear from people. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Bear with me. Okay. We will. I, I will. Sorry. I think we should hear from him. Yes. I just. I'm a little concerned that. Does he? Can he speak on behalf of their organization? Like, is he the mm -hmm. right one? And I. It. It holds more weight for me, coming from the organization, than him as the city okay. clerk. All right, I, I'm a, at a bit of a disadvantage because Robbie is handling the communication, but uh, Robbie's away. I will call him tomorrow and um, and ask him how comfortable he is in, in sort of speaking on behalf of the city clerk's association. Right, so if, I don't know if they've taken a position as a whole on this Okay, topic. well, I'll, I'll, I'll call him and I'll explore that with him and also, so, you would hope that he would be able to sort of represent the city clerk's association right. somewhat. Right. I think as we look at wrapping up our report, it speaks well for our work that we've yes. done. If we've heard from yes. the parent organization yes. that they all subscribe to. Yes. Okay. I will. Uh, I will call him and, and talk with him about his his role in that capacity and make sure he's comfortable addressing us both as the memory city clerk and perhaps more importantly as a representative of the overall report And I will also um, I will also uh, write a uh, press release and alert to uh, the media that you will be here and also you know we are moving along on the issue and taking a strong strong vote already to change to the memory city clerk. We hope to hear from others in the community have strong feelings about this. And I think I think we agreed last time also that this will be informational again and we'll actually vote on this in the rest of September. It's not by Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next um, we will hear from the um, the subcommittee on outreach and underrepresented communities. Continuing our discussion of the last meeting, we uh, hear from them. Uh, we also uh, would like to hear from anybody on the committee who has thought uh, uh, on this report, re-energizing the democracy recommendation to the district. Subcommittee first. Okay, so on the report, we just met in the last hour, and it was Molly, Bill, and I. Um, Molly is the chair, Bill is the note taker, and I'm the reporter. <laughs> uh, so we had a long discussion about, um, uh, once again, how to um, have better representation in the city government, and whether the, the charter itself is um, has any flaws in it that we have not recognized that would prevent people from being participating from um, uh, you know various areas of government and um, we didn't identify what those were we had discussions about various parts of the city you know the you know how, how the wards are how, you know, how we have elections that kind of thing um, we have more of a philosophical discussion about why people don't participate um, and whether or not this, there are structural flaws um, and if, if those two things really um, cause people not to participate. Um, I think, I, I read the report that was sent out, um, which I actually think did the job of what this committee would like to do, which is that um, there were many forums, there were outreach leaders, the meetings were in um, other communities um, in, around the city, um, there were a uh, number of recommendations. Um, most of the recommendations um, that were written up were not really um, followed or there wasn't a, a way, an avenue in which to um, actualize them, I guess. And, uh, but I think I think what we did, did decide was that the, that some of that work was done, that we understand that um, what the barriers are, are for participation. What we didn't have any agreement on was whether the charter itself um, has a, as a as a um, you know as a um, structure has any barriers. And I think the decision was that 
it would be best if we could still have those conversations and be sure to invite people or have um, access for communities to participate in the discussion. But we didn't get into the actual you know, way we would do it. Um, I will note my two comments, which were one that um, uh, in our uh, city council brought up at our been, which I wasn't really that enthusiastic about before, but that uh, an ombudsman could be charged with doing some of that work and implementing some of the, um, the um, you know, the, the, the kinds of things that the uh, study came up with. Um, and there was another thing that I mentioned, was the ombudsman uh, preamble. Pre yes, a preamble. It's possible that we could uh, write a preamble about the fact that we have value the participation from all communities. Um, much like preambles to um, governing documents identify why and, and sort of shape the values of, of the community in implementing the, the, uh, the documents. So those are two things that I came up with. We did not discuss them. It was just, they were just ideas. Um, I did want to mention that I, um, I did talk to some, we talked about Pioneer Maryland Workers Center and um, Bill talked to a few people too. And I just wanted to emphasize that the, the community that I did talk to was really under siege and um, thoroughly sort of saturated with issues that they, life and death issues right now. And even though there was some interest in talking about it six months ago when I first raised it in a small group meeting, um, it's just very low on the priority list right now. It's really survival, food, um, the border, you know, helping families, um, transportation for people without licenses. Those are the issues that are facing a community that would like to participate on some level and has had those discussions. Some people have with Mayor Narkowitz, myself, and some others, but um, it's, it's really not um, a, um, important way. No, it's not important, but it's really not um, a priority right now for many. So, Thanks. do you want to add about the barriers? Or? Uh, the, what Patty did mention, of course, was um, something that the mayor had brought up a while ago and, and would actually be directly involved in the charter, which is um, similar to the 16-year-old vote, municipal voting privileges for people who are not um, documented citizens or, or who can establish residency or approve residency in the community. Um, there was some discussion about that at one point. I don't know what's come of that, nor where the mayor is with that at this point. Uh, there are some some conflicts with that. I mean, most recently, for instance, Vermont, which allows licensure, driver's license for undocumented residents, um, just discovered that ICE has accessed all their data records and now are doing facial recognition scans of their of their licenses thereby making them completely vulnerable to arrest and, and, and deportation which was so I can understand why some people might be a little reluctant to um, expose themselves that way but but um, that was discussed at one point I don't know where that stands I don't, do you know where? Uh, the intent was to submit something for this meeting but Oh, okay, happen. so that's okay. Um, but similar conversations have been occurring where what does that mean and how how would we carry out something like this because right. it probably would require someone to register and that in and of itself causes concern. Mm -hmm. So, not really sure. So, unintended consequences would be critical to consider. Mm -hmm. uh, so, does the does the subcommittee have a, a sort of a next step in mind? Well, what I recommended was that we review um, the charter with an eye towards trying to find out if there is something in toto that creates um, barriers or certain aspects or dimensions of it that create barriers that we haven't seen before knowing that, again, we're looking at it through um, conditioned eyes of, of, of someone who basically doesn't 
know the experience of being oppressed necessarily. So, but at the same time, at least if we can identify something, and what I use as an example was the once upon a time, uh, the Hoyo Charter actually was designed as such to literally disenfranchise all neighborhoods by removing um, ward representation as uh, Latino, Latino communities started to grow in those districts. Holyoke was subsequently sued and lost, and uh, as long since it's about 20 years ago, I think, something that, that and now they have their ward representation as prescribed by Massachusetts general law, as I understand, and they abide by that. Their, their charter is uh, it's similar to what our charter was before we did the, the complete overhaul. They've been doing it piecemeal, and it's more controversial, but uh, there were intentionally embedded barriers that prevented participation and engagement by, by a particular cultural group. And it was, it was not by accident, it was by design. We are not going to find anything quite so overt in ours, but the idea is that, if they, that whether intentional or otherwise, or structurally, historically, or whatever, if we can identify those, that's a start. And that will give us uh, talking points, hopefully, uh, at our next meeting. I think this question of scale and constraints have led us to the point where we are sort of thinking how much can this subcommittee take on and therefore can we identify these particular sort of pieces within the charter itself where we might want to do some outreach around but even as Bill said I think you know earlier in our subcommittee meeting the idea is to ideally be doing this in tandem with the outreach um, because to me even though we are constrained with time, um, et cetera, et cetera, even the business of identifying particular devices in the charter, et cetera, without the participation of um, people who have more proximity to the issues is uncomfortable. Um, I hear uh, from the subcommittee that it has been incredibly challenging already for the various legitimate reasons to do this outreach. It's the summer, there are detention issues, at the border, there are all kinds of reasons why, um, you know, this is going to be hard and that's sort of part of this work. So um, one of the things I had read in the Re-Energizing Democracy Report was the city's commitment to sustain the current focus on overcoming logistical barriers by offering translation services and public meetings, providing childcare and transportation, and I just wondered to what extent the city could uh, sustain that commitment for our meetings and then to what extent could we implement maybe just a few strategies that they um, also participated in like going door to door uh, right away there's a barrier around language I don't know how many people on this committee maybe speak more than one language and potentially could be communicating just to let folks know hey this is what we're doing this is what we've been talking about this past month or doing something similar like a potluck. All of these things are time consuming. All of these things have sort of a myriad of challenges, but I think if we want to talk about um, doing outreach in tandem with sort of identifying these specific places so that there is a two-way street of communication around um, that piece around the charter, then we really need to be thinking about what we can commit to from a time perspective in terms of doing that outreach and what that would look like. Other thoughts from committee members about what you heard <coughs> from the subcommittee or about the re-energizing of the recommendations? And just a, as a, as a follow-up, is it, I mean, I don't know if this is something you would know, Lynn, but is it possible for us to have translation services for these meetings? Um, they, child care, I don't know how, what, where that led, that recommendation. Yeah, the child care, I, I don't know anything about. Okay. But um, translation services, we can always make that request. I know it's not translation-wise, but um, the Disability Commission's been having difficulty getting um, uh, translation services for hearing impaired people okay. at their, some of their public forums. So they've been making requests and there's been no response. But I think UMass Translation Services mm -hmm. has been used in other cases and that's something we could probably explore more. 
Yes, there were two mentioned in this report, the mass translation and Pioneer Valley interpreters. Mm -hmm. we've, we've also tapped into international language institute our connection to so. So just, you know, perhaps covering the basics um, on that level of accessibility around logistics, because that was a piece of the recommendation. And then maybe, I don't know if we can explore to what extent the city could commit to those logistical pieces around, um, you know, child care and transportation, food for public meetings, whether that would extend to us, what kind of budget would we be looking at, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But then there's the real question of once we can offer that, you know, what we learned from the from the report and what we sort of, some of us have also kind of experienced in our own outreach and work, you can offer these services, no one may use them. Um, so clearly there's kind of a, you know, a wind up phase, a foundation building, and that's the longer term work. And I think part of the reason why we were at our first meeting sort of like, oh my goodness, where do we begin here? Even to make those, um, pieces sort of fully accessible and deploy them very effectively we want to make sure that you know what would it take in order to make sure that people tune in to these meetings etc yes. there there was one member of the public uh, john thorpe who's also candidate for office but he emphasized it to me as we walk across the parking lot the one thing he was concerned about was that we that we stay within the two to focus on race, on disenfranchisement, and that he said class, transgender, sexual identity, um, all the things that create uh, a, an exclusionary culture, um, people who youth. do feel that they're not yet youth. <laughs> and uh, it, so he was saying not to lose sight of that. And, and I, I took his comments to heart. As defining disenfranchised right. community. Right. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's, it, 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 he described it as um, it's much bigger than that. And if you focus on race, um, he was suggesting there's racial privilege as well. Demographically, Northampton, as I pointed out, is one of the whitest places on the planet. And, it's, uh, and within it, there are disenfranchised people, regardless and not necessarily because of their racial identity. And so that inclusion includes you know, um, um, uh, people on fixed incomes who are, who, are, who are under pressure from, and we do hear from people on fixed incomes frequently, who do feel that they are entitled to speak and they are able to speak to, uh, to those issues. There are other people, however, who are, who are in isolation who do not feel they have no resource. They don't have uh, access to the government. So, yeah, it's a big nut. But it, it, and what I had suggested in the meeting was that the struggle counts, too, to, to just fob it off and shrug and go, well, yeah, it's a problem. It's hard. Yeah, it's, it's a problem. We're not going to do it. The fact that we're struggling towards it, even if they turn out with anemic results, is still the struggle is worth it because it hopefully it grows, it cultivates. So. And I'm not sure whether the preamble is aimed to serve that purpose, sort of name the struggle and, and, and broadcast to folks that we are at least attempting this to me. You know, I, I am. Maybe I'm just not understanding it fully, and, and we need to sort of have more time to talk about what it would actually accomplish. But I, I, I wonder about the potential for it just being lip service. We, we would like to do these things, ideally, but this is just to allow us to not have to do these things if we run out of time, et cetera, et cetera. Well, sometimes it's very important to describe your aspirations. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's essentially what resolutions are. They don't hold the weight of law, mm -hmm. and they aren't the structural part of the, mm -hmm. of the charter. But it is to say that we are conscious of this, and it is our aspiration to improve this on the circumstance. I think that we hold these truths to be self-evident. And you know, Lord knows, you can you can hear any 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 politician now continually citing the founding fathers as if they were sent from heaven with divine knowledge 
but they refer to that all the time. They refer to the preamble more than the Constitution more often. So um, it, it does, it describes intent. Are there, are there, uh, <coughs> Molly? Did you have I was just going to say that, in, you know, as um, Bill mentioned, JT has been coming and he, he asked him if he would be interested in being a part of the subcommittee in some, some way or another. He's pretty stretched. But um, in terms of looking at the uh, actual charter and where we can hone in, I could. I don't know what you think, Bill and Patty and others, but I could, if, if this is the way in which he would like to use his time, I could potentially see getting more consultation, more advice from as many people as possible. Um, and there might be others, uh, which is why this group comes in handy to sort of crowdsource and folks know, you know, maybe it's a limited engagement, it's not a full-term commitment to the subcommittee, but can look at the document um, with uh, an equity lens and really say these are some things you might want to be thinking about. You can't do everything, but maybe these pieces in particular. Okay. Um, I had uh, a couple of questions about the outcome of your re-energizing democracy recommendations. One is about the, uh, as mentioned on page seven, the emerging leaders training that was done with Casa Latina. What happened to those emerging leaders? Well, Casa Latina basically collapsed, is what happened um, on some part. There were some people that I recall that were years ago, and I didn't know specifically this, that were identified. In fact, one of them was one of the people I spoke with to ask if she would be interested in helping us reach out to other neighborhoods, and she said, I'm tired. I'm tired, and I and I really am way over. I'm. She said maybe in a year or so, but right now things are particularly tense for her. So, um, the and it collapsed for a variety of reasons, but not the least of which was lack of participation at that point. And they they were funded, and, and the city actually uh, continued to give them CDBG money. Um, they just couldn't stay cohesive enough and define their services enough to survive. I mean, I don't know where they're at right now. I have um, a native who I spoke with is not with them anymore. And I don't know if um, somebody's talking about getting re-energized or what. Well, that's, that's the agency itself, Casa Latina. That's Casa Latina, and the identified leaders were within that framework. and. Uh, um, Another problem is there's a high turnover of Latino population in Northampton or other uh, people on uh, living in concentrated neighborhoods like Hampshire Heights, Florence Heights, Meadowbrook on subsidies. There is a fair amount of turnover and so in most of the issues for them, the focus within their campus and their, their battles with the housing authority for the most part. In, they don't even, the people I spoke with don't even consider the city as, uh, as, as something that's part of their, in their universe of interest for the most part. Um, there was, uh, more recently, someone who was identified who spoke, who had, speaks to the council, Edgardo, I forgot Edgardo's last name. Pintel. Pintel, right. Um, and in fact, actually, he was uh, a number of people approached him about running for council for Ward One. It turns out he doesn't live in Ward One, anymore, so so. And um, it's it is tough. Uh, Mike Kirby could testify to this. Mike Kirby who used to represent Hampshire Heights uh, when he was councilor, um, organizing um, to try and get a community room in Hampshire Heights, right? Yeah, we did get one. Right, you got one, and then by the time I came on, no one was using the community room in New Hampshire, and then the housing authority took it back and turned it into yeah. an apartment. Yeah. It was a place where actually Center for New Americans was meeting and doing education there. It is this kind of. Um, There's also. Uh, the mob. Not the mob, but the. The mob. 
the Spanish mob. The, the Latin kings? No. Um, <laughs> what? I, no, I don't know which group you're talking about. Oh, uh, the, the, well, there's essentially some malign element, let's put it that way. There, it, right, there was, there were, there were. Still is, uh, you know. You're talking about the Latin kings. And, yeah. 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 In both the, in both the Hampshire Heights and Florence Heights. Right. And never mind. Uh, well, I guess my question, though, still is, of those emerging leaders that were identified and were working with at that time, did any of them stay engaged with city government in any, in any way? Have, has the mayor's office approached any of them to take part in? The only one I know specifically was Edgardo. Right. Um, Again, the turnover issue. I mean, several of the people that were identified don't live in Northampton anymore. Um, and this is historically this is going back to when Claire Higgins was mayor as well. So that. Um, and Garner was a emerging leader, or a, his name was identified through this process. I don't know if he was an emerging leader. I was not involved in this work here, um, but I know his name came up during this process, and he had since been appointed to a board or committee. Um, he but has. He has. He, he was, yes. I think he's still serving, to my knowledge. I don't, I'm not, I don't know for certainty. But, uh, but this sort slightly related, just to add this to the conversation, um, the Housing Authority, there's one, two, at least one tenant member that has to be a um, tenant of one of the complexes. And the last two times that we have had to appoint someone to it, we do direct outreach to um, the associations and then post something in the buildings there to try to generate interest for someone to serve. And this last time specifically, we really wanted someone new, some new turnover on the board and someone that maybe had a different perspective than what has been there for a while. And it took quite a while to identify someone. And then, and we don't identify them, they self-identify as somebody wanting to be involved, and they apply. Um, we, at least one person, we submitted their name and then their housing situation changed and they were no longer a resident anymore. So, it doesn't directly relate to this, but it does, when we, direct, when we targeted outreach to a very specific population that's required to be on this board, it was difficult and time consuming to find someone that was willing to put their name in. Uh, the other question I had, uh, one of the recommendations uh, was to create a uh, resident engagement team. Was that ever accomplished? And if so, did, did it work? Or, um, I'm not familiar with it. Who would be the person to talk to about um, sort of the outcomes and how things were implemented and the status? Well, on the charter, executive authority determines policy uh, along that line, and that would be the mayor's office. But I mean for the re-energizing, the, the report, the outcomes from that? Oh, the outcomes, so that was the, 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 the authors of the report were the Pine Valley Planning Commission, so they would... Um, and who, but who within the, the city would be able to say, oh, we implemented this, we did this, this is how it's gone, et cetera, et cetera. That's the, the question I'm asking. The report doesn't require this ask for or will require any type of reporting or, or compliance. It's not, a, it's not an order, per se, so there's no it were recommendation, so there's not a compliance report. Yeah. But I think the, the only city department that was really directly involved was planning and sustainability, but I don't know to what degree. Right. So the, rec the, rec the recommendations were made to the? Planning and sustainability office. Okay. Just right across the way. Okay. It's a, it is essentially, that's what PVPC is, is a planning. Right. So, conceivably, we could talk to them and see? Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, you could invite when you find them to come. That's a good idea. And talk about it. See, uh, you, you could probably flesh out some of this more. 
I think that's a good, I, I, I we make a motion. <laughs> I like that recommendation. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Also, um, involve those, the city's Healthy Hampshire Initiative. Um, who would oversee that? Um, she may be involved. I know that our senior center director, senior services director is involved with that. Uh, but I think Healthy Hampshire is more of a regional mm -hmm. group as well. I don't think it's just Northampton. And there's agencies that are part yeah, of it. Yeah, I think you're right. It, it, this it, Healthy Hampshire initiative was mentioned in this section I've been looking at about a regional leader, so that's why mm -hmm. I mentioned it. But I think that, that Wayne Fyden um, probably is the person who mo most knows about the process and the outcome of this report. Point we did was the principal contact point. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, do you think it would make sense to hear from Wayne um, at the next meeting? Then? Yes. The whole the whole committee, not just the subcommittee. Right? Yeah. Okay. I I'm healthy Hampshire staff by CES eleven. Oh. No. According to the marketing team. The collaborative ed education. I don't know if this has been updated, but that's what it says. It's the effort is staffed at Clavery. The um, talking about outreach to the neighborhoods. It, it seemed to me that. Uh, that the most successful outreach was done through the housing authority to the individual housing authority um, properties. <coughs> and they had varying degrees of success, but uh, I think enough to suggest that if we wanted to do some physical outreach going out into the, into the neighborhoods, that that would be certainly one avenue to pursue. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there are some complications a little bit in that it's a housing authority is under the aegis of a federal agency, but we, nothing precludes us from going door to door if you want to go door to door. Although I think using them as an access point, point of fact though, that might be part of the problem because they're an authority group who has, um, who Basically, the residents rely on the qual their quality of life. So, if they if they're reluctant to participate, having the, it's the equivalent of having the police come and ask you if you if you're behaving. So, I'm just it's worth a shot. It's it's, but you know, it does it does it uh, you know does it. Cultivate trust. I'm not so sure. I mean, part of the problem that we we're discussing with licensure and voting and all the other stuff. I mean, that if your status and your housing is, and the agency that's in charge of it comes and asks you if you're willing to participate or whatever, you, you, I think there's a problem there. Agreed. And I think that uh, one of the points that was made in this report is that the uh, the communication was also done through associate, the associations of the right. various yeah, the, and so, and the Some associations are more robust than others. Some are virtually non-existent in name only. It's, uh, but again, given, given the absence of other things, it's probably it's the best we got. Patty, did you, when you were referring to you, were, you, you had contacted the Pioneer Valley Workers Center. I didn't contact the center, but individuals. You, you contacted so people who were involved with the mm -hmm. Pioneer Valley Workers Center. Do you get the sense that they are busy with other priorities through this year, through 2019? Oh, I think there's potential for people to maybe come and attend and talk about issues. I just think the time. Later in the fall. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I can certainly pursue it. I, The timing right now is um, very busy.
Uh, well, does the subcommittee have, have uh, recommendations on then what our we we agreed that we want to hear from Wayne Friday on August twentieth. Beyond that, the subcommittee will meet again. I think we'll meet again, um, but we don't have recommendations at this point. At this point. But perhaps we'll meet again and come up with some recommendations mm -hmm. for us to do the plan. So we go into the fall with a specific plan. Mm -hmm. I do think it would be um, helpful to hear from Wayne to sort of inform mm -hmm. those recommendations just the sequencing of things. Mm -hmm. um, there, have, there were some recommendations, you mentioned some, but it feels like to every recommendation that's been put out there, there's like five reasons why it might be very difficult. So I guess those are questions, challenges that I'd be interested if Wayne is the right person to talk to and just sort of say how, you know, we were, we identified these two things or these three things, you know, here are some challenges we came up with um, that we had some concerns about. Is this still worth pursuing? because we are so constrained with time, et cetera. Door-to-door, um, -door, for example, you know, hosting something, some kind of a meeting, if, if those are feasible, then it makes sense to pursue it. Um, do we have enough information as of now to decide whether those are feasible? And would Wayne be potentially helpful to inform the feasibility of those suggestions? One, if not, who would? One <laughs> access point is that uh, Grow Food Northampton is from farmers markets at Meadowbrook, Florence Heights, Hampshire Heights. Um, the, the community, their community events. I think just being available as opposed to going door to door is I think a little intimidating. Mm -hmm. And um, I think being available, maybe sitting very lonely at a table with an apple on it or something, but at the same time being available, approachable, and discuss um, in an informal way is probably more likely to uh, be productive, at least for contacts and conversations. Just to be visible and to um, talk to anybody about anything. And uh, they're, as they're community events, they're not put on by us, but they're, and we can be there though. Um, and I've found in the past that people were uh, it's great just to sit there and have a conversation just so that there's an awareness that you exist and that you're a layer of, in my case, a layer of government that actually hopefully is accessible and considered to be accessible. So like a little bit of tape on? Yeah. Yeah. With, uh, with flyers and in multiple translation flyers. Um, I'm going to be frank. As I said, I don't think it's going to get a lot of people's juices flowing when you all give them an opportunity to talk about the charter, hear about the charter, maybe hit one, hit two, maybe someone becomes engaged, but by and large it's not, I mean, you know, we got Mike out tonight. <laughs> we don't, most folks, their came lives are way too yeah, complicated. came for the air conditioning. Yeah, well you shut it off. <laughs> 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 yeah. My pulse is beating <laughs> So, yeah, right, we're, we're barely keeping him awake, so. <laughs> it, 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 there is the, the, a real problem. Uh, to be crude about it, we're not sexy enough. For anybody. You guys should do something controversial. I'll see what I can do, I do try. <laughs> but I, I think, that to, to Mike's point, that, 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 and we've said this, that, that People respond to controversy or respond to something that, that is very evident it affects them. And that's when they respond. We're, this is a heavy lift because we're trying to encourage people, this actually affects you and it's going to take me a little while to explain why. And you see what you think about that. That's tough. That's tough. Regardless of the cultural world. And so I think, you know, I, I think that's our biggest, most critical problem on trying to get engagement because it's difficult to get anyone engaged at this point. Uh, so, but that's okay. I mean, I think that's, as I said, if we go table and oh, just talk to people about the weather or whatever, that's, that's something, that's point of contact. It's not, we haven't completely assimilated, but the fact is it's a point of contact as opposed to the continuing ongoing isolation. And I think just uh, just being visible and present. 
and maybe somewhere in someone's subconscious that they, and as I said, there may be one person who just suddenly finds this ribbon who thought, wow, I didn't even know this was possible to discuss. That one person would be a uh, huge step forward from where we are now. So I think, Stan, if I may, just, well, you know, we could get together and try to come up with something that may appear racy enough to encourage some, some participation, but I think, uh, as, as anyone goes to a table, it might be very helpful to have a handout that suggests all the committees and, and assignments that are available for people to participate in a representative government. I mean, I've always known that that's the, the, the I don't know how difficult it is for our mayor, but every mayor or city manager I've known has struggled with that. Right. And, and that's a way that people can be really impactful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how impactful they're going to be in this, and I don't know how valuable this is to anybody, but if we in our role can introduce them to an opportunity to participate in government by serving on a board or a committee, then I think we might have done something very helpful. Mm -hmm. Although not necessarily related to the charter. Exactly. But, well, yeah. it, it, it's not, Alan. I, I agree with that. But in our role as a, a one-year committee that is part of a city that has, um, has committed to sustaining this effort and engaging underrepresented communities, I think we need to do what, what we can to, 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 to help to engage those communities. charge here is to make recommendations on the charter and, and, and I mean I guess my job is to try and keep us on the charter um, these are all important things to do I mean and you know I heard about going door to door I don't know what you're gonna say when you go to door to door I don't know what you're gonna say to people when they open your door about the charter I mean again this is all important work I'm just not seeing how it fits into the the, the charge of this this body. Well, others. Well, no, you had something you want to say. Before, I'm Bob. trying to remember back. Um, just in terms of the tabling piece, do we want if we want to sort of pursue that? Should that be an agenda item of the subcommittee to talk about when we might do that? Who might be the best person um, to communicate? Should that person be able to? Um, speak more than one language, etc. What kinds of materials should we have available? I, in theory, really like the idea of having opportunities for people to engage in different ways. Just saying, is that something that we want the subcommittee to potentially take on so that we can be thoughtful about that? Yes. Okay. The answer is <laughs> okay. that would be a good, a good use of your time, too. So maybe we can add that to our next specific, agenda. That was Grow Foods. Uh, mm -hmm. Grow Foods are kind of Grilled foods in Northampton, uh, uh, they're farmers markets, they're, they're mobile farmer markets. All right, how many of us are able to communicate with non-English speaking people on the committee? And are any of us? Do no. we speak multiple languages? Yes. I, could, I can get by in French. Okay. Never really served me for Yeah. Quebec <laughs> 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 community. I'm fluent in Quebec. Quebec was in the Haitian community. I was being very little Spanish. Yeah. 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 I signed up a scholarship student and did all the communication with the entire family through Google Translate. Oh, cool. So, I mean, you know, you just bring your smartphone or computer, and if you encounter someone who doesn't speak English, just try it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a thought. Yeah, that is our most frequent tool at the reference desk for yeah. having all sorts of different mm -hmm. communities. It's improved a lot. Starting with, I'm sorry, this is going to sound maybe garbled, but. If we wanted to produce a handout, 
of some sort. I mean, could we, uh, would the mayor's office pay for um, uh, uh, it being printed in multiple languages? I can certainly ask. I can't see why it wouldn't. Okay. Okay. Um, do you want me to contact Wayne and ask him to if he can come to the next meeting? You can or I can. Okay. I'll, I'll give him a call. And uh, if, if, if you think of anybody else, Lynn, who was involved, I'll ask Wayne if there's anyone else that you would recommend. But if you can think of anyone else, mm -hmm. uh, let me know. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll have Wayne come August 20th if he's able. And uh, we'll hear from the subcommittee again. Everything that the members of the Rights Commission um, were their members during this time of study. Uh, uh, is, I'm mean, sorry, Pat, was the question, is, was the Human Rights Commission involved in the study? I mean, they were to some degree, they were, but I don't know how much. Um, but they were, they were part of, I remember it was part of the earlier part of the study I read. Any of those folks are still, if they're still on the Human Rights Commission, would they be? Hmm. Would anybody remember? I can check the membership list. We've had a good term. Yeah. Right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. There was a line in the report about them being the appropriate implementing or yes. oversight body. And I, yeah, it's like there was more there, but. I think um, you're right, though. I think all those people are gone. Yeah. Who were involved. Are we meeting on the 6th? No. Oh, we're not. Okay. Great. So um, just to sort of set this aside, the August 20th, do we, as the subcommittee and whomever would like to come because we can have more members, right? We don't, it doesn't have to be just the three. It just can't be a quorum of this. Unless you post the entire committee right. as a meeting at that time. Which we did. Thanks well, to well, Lynn. No, no. No, oh, we didn't do that? Subcommittee meeting. If you're going to have a more than, if you're going to have a quorum of this committee at the subcommittee, you should post both yeah, committees. Uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Really well. Vaguely, I'll probably forget in time, but thank you. All of um, them. Thank you. Um, do we want to do the same thing? Meet at 5.30? Sure. Sure. Great. August 20th. Thank you, Wayne. Mm -hmm. Emergency agenda. That was cute. Speaking of which, I um, okay. Um, Molly has told me that she might leave early because she has a early flight from Boston today. So. I have to go at 2.30 this morning. No, tomorrow morning. 2.30 a.m. tonight. Yes, we have a 7 a.m. So, um, you can feel free to That's all. Mm -hmm. See you on the 20th. Enjoy. Yep. Have a nice trip. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. The next item is uh, uh, further discussion on the section 37 temporary absence of the mayor that we uh, talked about last meeting. The mayor made a presentation, uh, and you have. Once again, attachment one is the same attachment we had uh, at the last meeting. Um, the Stan? Yes. If I could ask, can we take a three minute recess for the note taker? A three minute recess for Annie? Yes. Of course. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> three minute recess. That's okay. <laughs>
we had orientation and various little games. We did ranked choice voting on cookies. <laughs> well, That's awesome. I'm happy to report my first experience of ranked choice voting was like double three? chocolate chip macadamia nuts were the clear winner. Nice. So I picked the winner. Okay. Okay. Where you go? All right. Then we lobbied. Then um, it, it was the represent us people, um, Josh Silver's group yeah. Yeah. that um, contracted for the bus. Yeah, I got an email from them, like, yeah. Well, for whatever reason, we left the state house at 1.30 and drove to the apple tree something brewery, some brewery outside of Worcester, where we spent two hours sampling their wares. Right choice voting of beer? Yeah. Did you vote on beer? Um, not being a beer drinker, my vote didn't count for an awful lot. Of, uh, so. Thank you. Any yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, all right, section. Um, <laughs> Wait a second. One of your seven. members yeah, also yes. uh, recessed. Oh, Dylan. Dylan left as well. Okay. Well, one, two, three, two, three, two, one. Yeah. Is 
there a second? Second. Okay, discussion? Um, you know, I, I expressed my concern with these previously. Um, the um, and by the way, compensated city position. If there's a, it's most elected positions too, given the fact that there is a siphon associated with it. So, um, I understand the intent. I think. <clears throat> And I actually understand the mayor's original discussion of motivation not for to uh, council, but um, more specific to the school committee because of the problem of having uh, elected members who couldn't participate in the budget discussion or debate that, that because they were married to someone who had <coughs> who was a teacher, and that makes sense. And the council issue it's different because. We do not create a budget, and we don't have budgetary authority it's in, in the same way that the school committee does. We also don't hire. Um, and I think in a city of 29,000 people on level of engagement, the opportunity for this type of conflict creates more problems than it solves, personally. That's my opinion. Can you be a bit more specific about the problems that you pursue? Well, it, it literally precludes a household that might be politically engaged. They might not even agree politically, but who, who for instance, um, uh, you have two partners. Actually, right now, we have running. <laughs> uh, there's a, a, a man running in Ward 7 whose wife is running for school committee. This rule would disallow one of them from actually serving. <clears throat> um, I don't I don't think that's I don't think it's necessary or right. I mean I I, I think that <clears throat> or you have for instance a child of a family of a second generation who lives in the same household who wants to participate. We've had that happen as well. And they would functionally be precluded from serving. One of them would have to draw straws to see who was the one who got to run for office. Could you could we fix that by excluding elected positions? Because I think the other thing that this was getting at is the inside track that a, that a counselor has to get his kids mowing lawns in the summer. Right. Uh, that that I understand. That part I understand is that you know the, the perception of undue influence on the ability for someone to get their kids mowing lawns. Um, uh, but on the uh, you know on the scale of corruption, that's pretty low. <laughs> it's pretty low, and you know it harkens back to the days. And I understand where all this comes from. Going back to the day when you were related to someone, and all they gave you an orange vest and a check every month, and you didn't do anything. You no show jobs, which happened a lot. That's not an issue now, but I do. I understand the concern there. So I, I, you know. But for instance, um, someone who works for the city, uh, maybe even the major source of income for the family, and someone and a partner in the family wants to become politically engaged in the community and wants to either run, they can't. Um, I mean, I think we limit municipal employees in so many ways already. In, in their ability to participate in elections, all of them make sense, except for the fact that you can't put a sign on your lawn, you can't work for anyone's political campaign overtly, you, you're pretty limited as it goes. I, it just, I mean, I think it's, I think it's a solution in search of a problem more than, than anything. Would you Alan's suggestion about uh, I mean, the elected positions allay your concerns? Well, uh, then, no member of the city council, that would be the elected position, shall hold yeah. any other compensated city position. That's by law. But then, so if we preclude immediate family members from this, then we don't need this line, right? No immediate family member shall hold a compensated city, city position, position except for those which are elected. That's what I think. Oh, I, I see. I see. 
So that yeah, so that the right. school okay. committee member and the and the right. can stay married. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least not. not and not get divorced the because he has right. the conflict. Right. right. Um, doesn't solve the, and then you have the problem of someone who's already a city employee, that precludes the spouse from running for right. office, right. Mm -hmm. you know, and then you have the, you know, which came first, and right. so. Um, mm -hmm. We'll be talking about that in five minutes. I, I just so, it also disallows any uh, elected official whose spouse may be interested, who may have an opportunity to find, and jobs are hard to come by, and a job to work in the city. I understand that part, though, that just, that's a bridge too far. That it looks like the hiring could definitely have benefited from uh, trying to appease uh, an elected official. Sam? I, I don't want to cause put up any more barriers for people running for office. I, I don't think that the city council one is necessarily the issue. I, I do think that we should discuss the school committee one, but I think it should be limited to the school department rather than any city right. position, because I actually, like, I'm a constituent of someone who can't take part in collective bargaining. Right. And it's actually kind of frustrating, you know, and I don't, don't blame him, but it, there's like a part of it that feels like, oh, but my voice is not being brought all the way to the table. So I see where that's more common. Also, I mean, there's two people who are sitting out completely. That it just, it, the other one's not my representative, but it still just feels weird. So I think, to me, that's the bigger focus, that that actually is a problem, in my opinion. Um, the other ones I don't see as a problem where we would need to go this far, because I see it making a problem of, of adding one more barrier for people running for office when we already don't have enough. Generally. Don't have enough candidates. Yeah. Uh, Patty. Well, I was just going to agree with Bill and, and you as well. And so, I think this is just too restrictive and I, for the city council. And I actually have to find this about the school committee. Mm -hmm. So I would um, say that I would, don't agree with adding this language. Okay. What about school committee? Well, we'll get to okay. 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 Uh, any other discussion on? The proposed amendment, as you see it on the attachment, no, no immediate family member of a city council member shall hold a compensated city position. Yeah, I don't see the use of it. Okay. All right. Well, we'll call vote, please. Do you have a motion? Yes. Yeah, yes. So the motion is to approve. Yeah. Yes. We, well, that was the motion that oh. we made for discussion. Put on the table. Oh, it was put on the table, but there was no motion made to no. approve or disapprove. It was just put on the table. Well, for purposes of discussion, right? And then, but the so, still required. There's a vote so to be required. The, when you you put the a, a yes vote would uh, favor approving this amendment, and no vote would uh, be against the amendment. Stand moving. No. Okay, right. Stand. Um, <laughs> Sam Hopper. No. Uh, you know, Bob Wolverine. Nope. Dylan Gaffney? No. Because I did Lynn Simmons? No. Comes right away. No. All right, that's unanimous. All right, the next section uh, is Article 3, Executive Branch 3 1. This would add the language. No immediate family member of the mayor shall hold a compensated city position. No approval for purposes of discussion. Discussion? Uh, Bill? This one obviously makes more sense insofar as that the mayor is in the executive capacity uh, in charge of giving out jobs. And the the conflict would be would be real, um, and but I would actually like to amend this to what Alan had suggested before, with the, the exception of an elected position. 
You want the, the mayor's spouse on the city council? I want the mayor's spouse to be able to run for the city council. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's I up to the public to decide whether that's too much. But I think that uh, I don't think a spouse should be denied the opportunity of, of citizenship. And so, in that respect, I think, yeah. So that doesn't inherently create a conflict of interest, like conflict of interest law. Do we need this anyway? Like could the could the mayor actually could a, a immediate family member actually work for the city? I must say, an existing job. Right. 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 So this would probably I. I it probably would the mayor, the mayor's immediate family member would probably not be able to be appointed to a compensated position because it wouldn't be special municipal employee status, and so there would be no exceptions. Um, there's nothing that would prohibit uh, the mayor's immediate family member from running for office, mm -hmm. but we're the mayor would not be allowed to hire any members by state ethics. Also, right. right? Mm -hmm. The problem is that the mayor would have to abstain, but who would be making, the person who would be making the decision would be a subordinate of the mayor. That's always the problem mm -hmm. with these, you know, right. the, the, the superior per, um, officer having to step away and then this going to a, a you know, somebody who is supervised by that superior officer making the decision, well, you know, what decision is that person likely going to make? Uh, but I think with, with the elected status being allowed, uh, voters would make an informed choice of whether they thought that that was too much undue influence or effect power and authority concentration in one area. Um, but you, at the same time, there are, you would deny an opportunity for someone who might be qualified who may disagree even with the mayor, mm -hmm. and uh, who <clears throat> may have excellent qualities that would qualify them otherwise. And it's not the mayor say. The mayor doesn't say whether you get elected or not. And the mayor has no authority over you right. in that respect. So, so I'm not sure that this adds much at all by adding this to the uh, to the charter. Mm -hmm. Right. I think the, it wasn't that your point, Lynn, was putting this in is redundant in so far by state law that compensated at least a, a, a right. paid position. Um, but state law doesn't preclude a, a spouse of the mayor from running, right? I've never been asked that question. I've seen, I've seen <laughs> actually, <laughs> where was it? Question. I don't know if it was Massachusetts or Rhode Island where a husband and wife were running against each other. They were not divorced at that point, they were running against each other. The George and Kelly Ann? <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. And, you know, I mean, I think that's perfectly legitimate as far as I go. But I don't know if it's allowed in Massachusetts. It's worth investigating. But it, if it is, then this, this amendment's unnecessary. What's kind of my feeling on it? Are we using spouse just as the most extreme example? Yes. Or, okay. There's immediate other, family, there's yeah, immediate family members are defined in the conflict of interest right. law. Yeah. All right. So we're at the point then of questioning whether this is necessary at all, whether it accomplishes any, anything beyond what exists in the state's conflict of interest. Is that, is that right, Lynn? Mm -hmm. So uh, then my suggestion is that we table this and um, you ask the mayor what he, his what his reasoning was for bringing this forward. Well, I think I can certainly uh, confirm with him, but my understanding, at least for the mayor piece putting it forward, was while he has always taken that stance and has never, would never um, have an immediate family member work under his administration, mm -hmm. 
there's nothing that was set in stone precluding that from happening. But, but, but Conflict, yes. But I think what Alan's point was getting to is if a department head, there may be undue pressure to hire that person just by the relationship. I think that the, the question is, um, if you want to table this, I'll talk to the State Ethics Commission and I'll find out from them exactly what leeway the mayor has uh, to hire an immediate family member or to have an immediate family member hired by any, in, in the executive department. Could you also ask about running for office? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Be, uh, yeah. Bob? That, that's my, my concern. I mean, we've done a lot to try to encourage people to run for elections. Does this preclude our mayor from ever having a school teacher as a part of yeah, I mean, I'm bothered by that, recognizing the difficulty that we currently have. But nevertheless, I mean, there's a whole lot of school teachers in the city. Well, don't forget that uh, the mayor is a member of the school committee. Yes, yeah, that's so what I was going to say. We're going to get there in a second. Yes, I'm not really yeah. aware of that. <laughs> And Lynn, wasn't the mayor basically trying to be fair to uh, Well, I think that's what was motivating yes. this more than yes. anything. Yes. He was going to impose this on the school committee. He wanted to impose it on all of the yes. elected, yes. Elected, yes. elected bodies. Yeah. Okay. Is there, the is there a motion to table this uh, until Alan consults with the state ethics commission? So moved. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? <coughs> okay, that is tabled, and um, and Alan, you'll you'll do that yes. research, and then you'll communicate with the mayor to see if he has any further thoughts he wants to share with us. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, the third uh, section affects the school committee, section four three, and again the language that's been proposed uh, is that no immediate family member of the school committee member shall hold a compensated city position. Is approval for purposes of discussion? Second. Okay. Now I've heard, I think two people have thoughts on this. So Sam first. Uh, you were proposing to amend this consent. Yeah. I would propose to amend it to a compensated city position within the school department. Prohibiting just or within the school within department? The, yeah. Okay. okay. Patty, did you have a... I'll second that amendment, by the way. I think it's a, I think it's a good compromise. For me, I, you know, I've thought about this a lot, and, um, and I think the only time when this is an issue is when there's collective bargaining, when they're bargaining a, con a contract. I did talk to two former school committee members um, about just in general what they thought about it. Um, I. I know I'm, this is a minority position, but I disagree with this language. I, I don't think it should be restricted, and I think that we, being the city, being the largest employer in the city, it's the largest department, I think it really restricts potential school committee interest. Um, you know, I also think it's, you know, it's good for school committee members to be informed about what's happening inside the school, and I don't think that's always true in the school committee. So I, I understand where the mayor is coming from. I think it's very exclusive to the collective bargaining. Um, I understand that it means that some wards are not represented for the purposes of settling a union contract. With it. But um, I, what, as Bill had said, I believe that two members of a household can operate and represent um, different sides of um, conflicts. And I, I do it myself in my own household. And uh, I think if you take an oath to represent the interests of the city on the school committee, then you have to um, you know, take that job seriously and not divulge information that um, can't be divulged, divulged to your spouse. As a nurse, I can't tell my husband that my next door neighbor's in the hospital. And I wouldn't ever, you know, but that's the law says that, right? And, um, you know, I, I think it's, I think the assumption is that there's always going to be a conversation that she's, and I don't think that's always true. Okay, so when you say you're opposed to the language, you're opposed to the concept, you're not mm -hmm. proposing the amendment, okay? Nope. Well, the, 
in this case, though, the issue is different. It's, um, you actually have two school committee members who cannot participate as school committee members. It's not, it's not just a question of collective bargaining, it's even some aspects of the budget that they're actually, mm -hmm. and that, that's the biggest portion of what you do when you run the budget. And, right. and that conflict is glaring. And, and the difference being in this case is because actually the school committee is a hiring agency. They do hire. Um, they do have authority over um, teachers. And if there is a teacher who, th this conflict is evident, and it also, it, it's, and, it, and actually to Bob's point, which is just as interesting, um, whether the mayor's spouse can be a school teacher, that's problematic too, because the mayor, point of fact, is on the school committee and does have this embedded conflict. You certainly don't want the mayor abstaining from vote or recusing themselves. You don't want to be, and the people who are the representatives are obliged to recuse themselves. So point of fact, they're not expressing two different points of view. Yeah, they're not expressing they any, yeah, they're not expressing any point of view. They, they, they're rendered moot, and that actually serves nobody. I mean, one would hope that actually someone would consider that when they're running, but that doesn't necessarily come up until after you get elected and you find out, oh, I can't vote on these. Now, in some cases, I would imagine there's some members who go, thank God I don't have to participate in this. And I don't have to own any of this. But the fact is you want people to own this. And I, so in this case, I, I actually understand the need for this one. Um, my same objection still holds about uh, limiting someone's ability to run for office, but I think Sam's issue actually, Sam's amendment addresses that at least diminishes the impact on the ability for someone to run. It's, but I, I, I think it's unfortunate for the residents and including the, the representative school committee members who weren't aware of the circumstances that they cannot participate in this, this very critical level of, of what they took an oath for. Otherwise, they're just citizens, just like you and me, attending a school committee. They can't vote. Are all decisions made, though, in, in the Not all. Session? No, I mean, no, no. Not. It seems like, I don't, I mean, I don't watch the meetings once in a while, but and it seems like strategy might be in the executive session, but decision making should, shouldn't it be in public? It's in public, yeah. but they still can't vote. Not even on the budget, the budget's done in public, and I can't vote on it. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, like, Ed was actually advised to not vote on the budget right. because his wife works. Advised by whom? The ethics committee. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the budget. interest. Yeah, yeah exactly. That. Mm -hmm. It is the direct financial interest, and mm -hmm. that is a huge part of the school committee is the budget, mm -hmm. and he did not. Now, the ethics commission makes a difference. Yeah. There is a yeah. decision. The other thing, it hasn't happened yet. Granted, it may never, but it, we could be preventing something by adopting this language. Because if we had just two or three more members of the school committee that had a spouse or immediate family member in the school system, how would we adopt a budget? Yeah, that would be a quorum. Necessity would, would apply. Right. But that's how already that a on the rule of necessity. Does it also mean that the uh, the two people who have to recuse themselves cannot run next next time? Then? Well, that's the that's the other part of this. What happens okay, when fine. somebody submits papers to run whose spouse works for the school department? Um, mm -hmm. That person's going to have to one of them is going to have to resign. Uh, uh, assuming this, so it's a assuming it goes through yes. the whole yes. process, mm -hmm. you know. And that could take two years. Yes. But, I mean, I think at that point. But, then, but, but, you know, I mean, in 2023, for example, if somebody filed run for school committee who had a immediate family member work in the school department, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be, a, I mean, nothing would have to happen until that person was elected. elected. Mm -hmm. And then, and then presumably, I mean, the, the, the immediate family member would resign. Otherwise, I mean, why elect mm -hmm. someone who 
without that syrup. Right. Exactly. Right. I mean, so. But it does mean the two, whoever they are, can't. One, one's not running. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, one's, one's not, not running. running. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure that I was on the Okay. Any other? Is just one question. Yes. Yeah. I offered an amendment, but I do want to make sure that that's the right terminology. Right. Like, is it is just in the school department and that? So the, 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 the amendment that you're offering is to add the words within the school department. Yeah. Is that That's fine. sufficient? That is, okay. okay. 900 roughly. All right, there are 900 school department roughly. employees. Roughly. Thank you. Okay, my question uh, that uh, was briefly mentioned last time is whether there needs to be a kind of a cooling off period. Mm -hmm. uh, attached to this. Uh, the prohibitions currently prohibit uh, former members of the school committee from holding any compensated appointed city office or city employment until one year following the date on which that member's service expired. Would it be advisable to, um, to add a similar provision to this uh, prohibition on immediate penalty? And they could run, right? Like an immediate family member could also not run if they're. Uh, so it wouldn't be time for the person to resign and then have that one year. Is that what you're saying? Well, I, I'm using that only because it's it's already applying to former school committee members. That's somebody figured that a one year cooling off period. Well, it's sufficient. state law, that isn't it? The, I think that you can't lobby, mm -hmm. right? Now, out of an elected position by state law already. I don't think running is a, it's a different thing. I also have a question, I, just to be clear. This does not preclude a school department employee from running themselves. Can you school, can't, can't, can't. The first part. They can That's run. Right. You cannot yeah, be a yeah, city employee and yeah. run for office, right? But, uh, right, but somebody who's uh, of a different school department, in the school department. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which that is that is yeah. yeah. Do you see any value, uh, Alan, to adding a, a one-year I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to understand what the one-year cooling period, cooling off period is. It, you mean that for a year after someone is on the school committee, their, their uh, immediate family member cannot be hired? while they're on the school committee and for a and year for after. A year, yes. I, I don't I don't see the value of that because although you know Bill did mention that school committee hires, school committee hires the superintendent. Right. Okay. The, you know the school principals hire the teachers. So um, I think this is more about avoiding situations where school committee members can't um, can carry out one of their two principal functions, they being the budget and hiring a superintendent. So I don't see okay. uh, the value. All right, so uh, I think uh, we should first vote on the amendment, which is to uh, specify that this would only uh, apply to school department positions. Yeah. Uh, Stan Moen. Yes. Sam Hopper. Yes. Uh, Patty Healy. Yes. Bob Lewis. Yes. Dylan Gaffney. Yes. Lynn Simmons. Yes. How's it going? Yes. Uh, it's unanimous. And now a vote on the main motion, which is to prohibit immediate family members of school committee member from holding a compensated city position within the school department. Roll we'll call you. Uh, Stan Moen. Yes. Sam Hopper. Yes. Patty Healy. Yes. Bob Lewis. Yes. Yes. Ben Simmons. Yes. Councilor Bright. Oh, yeah. Patty, okay. <laughs> hey, was you, that a yes vote from you? Yes. Okay. So that also was unanimous. Yeah. Okay. And what about Smith? What about Smith's yes. vote? Yes. 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 There is a, a note on the attachment uh, that the mayor suggests that the same prohibition be extended to uh, Smith vocational. Superintendents of Smith's Agricultural School, as they are formerly known in Charter Section 5-4. So that would be a... Good night, Mike. See you later, Mike. Thanks for coming. 
Um, Good night. Thank you very much. Um, so that would be a, under section uh, 5 4. Uh, I think that would be a subsection. It would just be another yeah. sentence at the end. Another sentence? Yeah. Okay. Another sentence. That would be uh, the same language, similar language. No immediate family member of a superintendent of Smith Agricultural School shall hold a compensated city position within that school department. Within that school department. Mm -hmm. Okay. Within that school department. Mm -hmm. Or same yeah, right now, am I missing? Is there a prohibition that is one of the superintendents can act? I don't see a prohibition that a superintendent can not hold another compensated. Well, we're proposing that now. Okay, so we're proposing, we're proposing all of it, not just the immediate family well, member part. Well, no, I think Sam now is raising the, the bigger issue, uh, Alan. There's nothing under section. Five four on the Superintendent of Smith School that that, that specifies that they are prohibited from holding another compensated city position. It's true, but is isn't that precluded under state law as well? Mm. I can't say that for sure. That that um, that is have two salary positions in one city. Depends on whether, probably not two salary positions that would be holding two contracts that would, um, without the possibility of a special, it's probably not permitted already. Yeah. But I can also check on that. Yeah. I remember reading somewhere once upon a time. Let me, uh, well, it would, it would uh, it make sense that if, if that additional language is needed, and we do that all at once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, do you you don't recall, Alan, why there was no no specification of that prohibition in the charter request? I don't think that those who were drafting the charter were looking at Smith Volk as another school committee. Yeah. It's a very odd thing. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we're the only jurisdiction in the Commonwealth with two separate school committees. Um, and so they were looking at Smith Volk as just another, like the electors under the Oliver Smith will and all of the others that just, you know, the, uh, the trustees of Forbes, that just get thrown into our others. Uh, and they, did, they weren't looked at as the, in the same way as the school committee. But in fact, they do exercise similar. Exactly the same. Right. Exactly the same. So. Yes, Bill. The, uh, Actually, the whole thing, I just, I just thought of this when I said that school committee. I think we should also specify with uh, NPS, uh, we, we should specify, I think we call it school committee, that someone could have a Smith vocational yeah, uh, partner working because there's no crossover. Right. And that we should make the distinctions, mm -hmm. that would require an amended vote, I think, I but um, to mm -hmm. stipulate that the Northampton Public Schools versus the vocational yeah. agricultural high school. All right, Bill, go ahead and close that. Okay, so I we're, we're, we're going we're now going we're back back back. Back. We're backtracking. Yes. So I would like I'd like to amend the initial vote if or propose an amendment for the initial vote that spe uh, specifies the Northampton Public Schools Committee. So no uh, no compensated position within the Northampton Public School System, which Smith Vocational is not. That's a separate designation. That Smith Vocational Agricultural High School, right? Can somebody tell me what the language was before? I mean, what was what? What did you vote on before? It was no immediate family member of a school committee member shall hold a compensated position City in position North, within Northampton within the school department. Within the school department. Within the school department, so you could, I guess, you could be more specific than that. But, but no one is suggesting that uh, uh, that the school department is Smith Folk. Right. I mean, my only concern is that it's it's kind of overreaching, and and mm -hmm. that it, it is Smith Folk is a school department. It's not, right. Right. So it is. It, it could be interpreted in time without the clarity, without the clarification that I, I think is right. worth putting in there. That. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so your new suggestion is, is to change not just the school department, but the Northampton Public School Department. Okay. Um, so, uh, procedurally, uh, how should we... <laughs> well, that's a good question, because we did already vote on the measure, and I'm reintroducing the measure. A motion to reopen. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so moved. I, I moved to reopen the voting uh, to and for purposes of amendment. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Okay. Now I move that motion, uh, of the amended motion, which is to specify Northampton Public School System. Second. Okay. So essentially, what we're doing now is we're clarifying the, the words within the school department to be within the Northampton. Public school department. Right. Okay. Uh, we'll need a roll call on this end. Okay. Uh, Stan Wilton. Yes. Sam Hopper. Yes. Patty Daly. Yes. Bob Morris. Dylan Gaffney. Yes. Wendy Simmons. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Bill, for catching that. So, um, so Smith School, do you, so Alan, you want to do some research on the, the problem? I'm willing to. I mean, you, you could solve the problem by adding two sentences. Yes. You know, no superintendent of Smith School shall hold a compensated position. No immediate family member shall hold another compensated position within the Smith Vocational School. I mean, that would solve the problem. Yes. I mean, you, and you don't see any reason not to uh, extend that prohibition to Smith School members in themselves, the trustees. The trustees. I don't see any reason not to. Um, there have been trustees with family members working at the yeah. vocation. Yeah. Yeah. The term is four years. Also. They're an even smaller board, though, so yeah. the conflict could have a greater impact. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You have one person. And have, I should point out, yeah. have had a great, those conflicts have existed and have created problems. Mm -hmm. And Alan, should we, should we use the same language prohibiting former members of the, of the Smith School trustees from holding compensated appointed city officers in employment until one year following their expiration? Yeah. <laughs> we haven't quit yet. Mm -hmm. Somebody mm -hmm. forgot some parking tickets. Uh oh. Uh, someone will remind them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know that the mayor's intent is to try and equalize Smith Vogue and the school committee mm -hmm. in their respective positions, and yeah. it seemed reasonable to me, but. I guess it's a, a matter of policy that, uh, I mean, there's no legal prohibition, there's no legal requirement, there's no legal prohibition. Mm -hmm. But they, uh, uh, I mean, I believe the Smith School trustees exercise similar powers as, right. as school committee members. They do. Yes. But um, we have a little quirk here because two of the trustees of the Smith School have paid positions in the city. The mayor and the superintendent of the schools are members of the committee. Well, yes. By virtue of their office. By virtue of their office. So I think you would need to, uh, well, I think that would be self-evident. Uh, they're not receiving any additional compensation. No, they're not receiving any compensation. What did the trustees receive? Do you know? It's 20 with five. What their stipend is? Yeah. Five thousand. Yeah, as of twenty sixteen. Well, <coughs> that's. Well, I make a motion uh, to table and with with Alan just making some inquiries in state law and. And then we'll, we'll be better informed as to how we approach this. So that's my motion to table. Is there a second? Second. The problem I see, Alan, is that 
no member of the municipal trustee shall hold any other compensated city position but to do by virtue of their their elected position. But I don't think that's the same because the mayor is the mayor and is the chair of the school committee, right? Like right. that He's there's no that conflict also. there. At any rate, let's let's uh, let's vote on the tabling motion for Alan to research that portion of it, and, uh, and we'll take this up again. I just point. Uh, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Final uh, item today. Section 3.9, vacancy in the office of the mayor. Um, uh, I'm not sure that the, the, the suggested changes that I distributed are, are the best fix for this. Um, there, there are there are two problems that I think I see in the current language. Um, one of which is not, and the biggest I think is that it's not explicit that next regular election refers to a city election on a two year cycle, whether or not the mayor's office was on the ballot or not. Uh, Alan's interpretation of the intent of this is that if there's a next regular election, which could be midterm of the, of the mayor's term, a mayor, a new mayor would be elected for a full four-year term. That, I think, would be clarified within this, within this session. Um, secondly, um, there's language in, um, in subsection A that refers to uh, if the vacancy occurs prior to the 18th month, which would have to be by May of the second, by the end of May of the second year of the mayor's term, uh, uh, there will be a special election, except if there's a regular city election scheduled for 120 days. Well, that, that can't happen because the next regular city election would be in, in November. So I think that that language is is easy to fix just by removing that that sentence. But, but Alan, do you want to further <coughs> uh, sort of uh, explain the, the So my my reading of the existing text is that um, the the intent was to elect a mayor at a special election serve only until the next regular election. And to your point, Stan, Section 8-3 <coughs> is entitled Regular City Election. And the regular city election shall be held on the first Tuesday following the first Monday in November in each odd-numbered year. So um, I don't have a, uh, an objection to adding that the mayor uh, so elected at the next regular election will be elected for a full four-year term, but I think that it's implied that the next regular election is not the next regular election at which the mayor would have been on the ballot anyway. So this proposed change changes that, that intent. So the intent is to have a mayor elected at a special election at which the turnouts are not just low, but abysmally low, only be effective until the next regular election, at which time at a, at a scheduled election, we will elect a new mayor for a four-year term. The intent was that if a mayor is elected and swears the oath of office, and then she has a heart attack the next day and dies, we don't want a special election 90 days later to elect somebody for essentially for four years. That was the intent. Only when you get past the point where the next regular election is available to elect a mayor at the time of the vacancy, 
um, would you have either a special election until the election when the mayor would have been on the ballot or the, the council president served? So I don't think that this was um, um, as suggested in the e email that prompted all this, that there was a failure to account for the four-year term or there was, uh, but there is a definite um, inconsistency in B, which says between the 19th and 22nd month of the term for which the mayor is elected, the city council's president shall serve as mayor until the next regular election. That's right, that's correct. Then it goes on to say the council president serving as mayor under this subsection shall take office immediately and serve the balance of the unexpired term. That just needs to be deleted. That second phrase needs to be deleted, clearly. Um, but there's a lot that can be done to clean this up because there, I mean, any time the, the council president takes over, it should say that the council president takes over immediately. Um, uh, as as it should say for someone elected at a special election should take over immediately as well. Um, we can add language, full four-year term at the next regular election, I don't have a problem with that. But I don't think that there's this terrible uh, flaw in our charter. Um, there are a couple of tweaks here that would make it more consistent and, and clearer. This is actually, this is new with this charter, this language. Before that, it literally was that the council, the mayor could have a heart attack after being inaugurated, and the city council president, at the time his two-year term, would serve the full two years uncompensated, mind you, only with the, their council stipend to serve as their, and preside as the, and I gotta tell you, it gave me agita for, for four years before we fixed this. It was it was terrifying, but the, the prospect of actually the council serving as mayor without compensation, other than the stipend that they were serving, received, and without being elected essentially by the by the city. But it was it, and it was weird because the council president was elected by the council, and it didn't have to be an at-large council; it could have been a ward council. And and, and it, it clearly it was it wasn't particularly well thought out. This is much more detail oriented and actually when I was looking at just B, exclusive, uh, exclusive of everything else, it did seem rather bizarre, but in the context, if you look at item D as well and A is referenced, it is framed, it does make sense. It's admittedly, I mean, some of the problems that, you know, Alan discovered, for instance, with, with special elections, the time, the, the time frame just couldn't work. We, we made a clock that didn't work on that. This, the clock works, and it does exactly as Alan said, or at least addresses the concern that you would basically be stuck with the mayor who basically was the, the first person standing in people's line of view for the people who bothered to show up to vote. It wasn't an engaged uh, election. It was a special election. This allows things, a course correction, but also allows the city to continue to run smoothly uh, in, in, in this uh, rather significant transition. So, I, 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 you know, when I first, when you first shared that letter with me uh, from Mark Warner, that I, I, I agree that that seems really bizarre, but I had not taken into consideration that the next election could be the, the election for the council election, the school committee election. So, it was not, we're not talking about. But I will also, if I may, I'm concerned that that, that 120 day um, item is not the only time frame that doesn't work here. And I really think that somebody should be sort of charting this and figuring out. Yeah. And figure out the time it takes out the papers, preliminary races. Well, yeah. And, yeah. You know, but when we look at the, the 19th and 22nd month, how do you get the 22nd month of a term and decide that that's the cutoff because you know you have to pull papers you have to get signatures you have to submit them this you know there needs to be enough lead up time to the election and, and and maybe these these months work correctly 
but I picked out the exact same thing the stamp picked out. I looked at 120 days, and I don't think you can do that. That, that that's possible. Right. And I think that there may be some other dates that are also really not possible because there may be some confusion between the next regular election, which is in November, and the term, which starts in January, goes January to January. So I, 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 I and it may be that all these these months work perfectly, but I would certainly be. You know, feel better if somebody actually looked at that. Well, the, the fly in the ointment, of course, is also if there's a preliminary. Because then all of a sudden the calendar changes right. again, and then your windows get smaller and smaller. Right. And it was the special election it's that the was special election day. because that 90 day special right. election when, when Jesse yeah. left, right. that was really You had to important. turn in your papers the same day you took them out. Yes. You had to get orders to be the fly. It was, it was, yeah, it's in, uh, so it, I, I haven't done the math, I don't have the brain for that, so I don't know. Well, of course, if you have been some runoff voting, then that doesn't come <laughs> into <laughs> Right, but even with runoff voting, or ranked choice voting, I'm not sure that these, these yeah. dates work anyway. No, no, I agree. Yeah. But it does remove the issue of a spe right. uh, preliminary election, so. I think this this committee well, is done what they're going to do about that by recommending my choice. Right. Well, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't, I can't speak to why the 19th and 22nd months were were, were chosen. I, I, that's. It would, I, I know they had a similar discussion. They tried to figure out the clock, um, but they supposedly did that for special elections too, and that didn't work at all. So um, it's, I don't know who we asked. The clerk, Pam, I know. Pam actually will probably be our best resource to figure out how you can back long this yes. work. I would feel better if she signed off on it. <laughs> it's clear to everyone on the committee that when we refer next regular city election that if it were this year's city election and the mayor had resigned that the mayor then would be on the ballot again. Is that, is that clear? Okay. So that was the intent? Yeah. Okay. Um, otherwise you would have specified the mayoral election. Okay. Uh, all right. So, um, Or immediately for the period and remove and serve the balance. 
terms of that expired or under that expired term. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Uh, Sam Moulton. Yes. Sam Hopper. Yes. Patty Healy. Yes. Bob Boris. Yes. Dylan Gaffney. Yes. Lynn Simmons. Yes. 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 May I make one other suggestion? Yes. yes. Anywhere it says next regular election should say next regular city election. Mm -hmm. So that's what 8-3 says. I will move that as an amendment to place to insert the city. So that would be in B. Why couldn't they run for mayor? 
they could. I remember that being discussed that they would be, at one point there was a discussion that they would not be allowed to run for the position that they're serving in interim. That, that, but I don't know, I guess that wasn't made a rule, but that was discussed at one point, was that they are disqualified from running. And what did David Nyquist do? He just stayed in and then ran for mayor. But uh, yeah, I mean, we were pretty much making it up as we went along at that mm -hmm. point because that's that what was the charge was. Yeah. And he had already announced and he was already right. oh, were already yeah. Yeah. Was on the ballot. Uh, is anyone suggesting that we need to address that issue? With the I don't know. I, I think it's, again, it's another. It, it's, some of these things just have to be this way. Yeah, there's there's going to be it's not a perfect world. <laughs> okay. Not a perfect world. Right. But but I, I do think that we should specify the city council president will serve as mayor during these interim periods. Um, it's specified in subsection B, but not uh, in subsection A. During the 90 days, yeah, up, we're leading up to the election. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you want to invest them with all the authority in the area. So, in A, yeah, um, so the mayor dies, then it's 90 day period before the special election. We elect uh, a mayor that serves until the next regular election, uh, who is serving during that 90 day period. So, I, I think. Well, we should add a line that says the city council president shall serve as mayor until the that special city election. That's kind of Yeah. <clears throat> yes, I'm, a, I'm a, Yes, I'm rereading it just to make sure it makes sense. It's a. Uh, I will, I will, uh, 
Alan's suggestion was a good one. I will uh, go to Pam and show her the amended uh, section 39 and see if she has any further suggestions about the calendar. Right. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, it's essentially yeah. the clock. When does the clock start okay. ticking? When up and what does it she Okay. Does anyone have any other business they want to uh, bring to the table tonight? I just wanted to correct what I had said earlier. It's 650 school department employees and 125 at Smith location. Oh, okay. So combined, so it's 775. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Uh, hearing no other business. Uh, uh, Second. 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 <laughs> All right. All right. So, reminder that we will not be meeting for uh, a while now until the next twentieth. So, we'll enjoy the next five weeks. But now the meeting is over. I ask if people will want to sign. <laughs> Domination yes, papers. Are you just getting started? Uh, well, no, Bill is back. Cut till Friday. Jeez. I know that I have a captive audience.